Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, Quick Hitter Edition. I got my main man, my partner in crime. <laughs> the doctor is back for a couple quick hitters. It's nice to see everyone again. It's great to see Bernie and Benny, uh, the old gang, back together yeah. again. <laughs> and it's so, only uh... <laughs> natural that you come back for a Detroit episode. Uh, breaking news just happened today. Uh, longtime Detroit mob figure, reputed street boss, Peter Toko, passed away this morning uh, at what used to be Beaumont Hospital. It's called Corwell now, uh, peacefully surrounded by his family. And uh, this is one of the, you know, one of the last of the Mohicans, man. This guy was an OG's OG when it came to LCN. Uh, Jack, the, the the former Godfather, uh, Jack Jack Toko's nephew. Uh, I'm told you became a capo at some point in the '90s. Street boss, I think, when Jack became, or when Jackie became Jackie Jackaloni, who's the reputed boss now. When Jackie became boss in '14, PT took over as street boss. There's a great picture of him in your book, Motor City Mafia. Um, it seems like he's aware he's being surveilled by his. Yeah, it's almost like he's smiling. It's almost like he's smiling. So I, I if I'm not mistaken, he, he yeah. might have been aware of it because he seems to be mugging for the for the uh, picture. So if you want to see what he looked like when he was a younger man, there's a great photo in, in Scott's book. Motor I think that it was a surveillance photo from 80 or 81. And yeah. he looks he's somebody who looks a lot at the end. His last 20 years, he looked a lot different than he did his first 50 year or 50, 55 years. Uh, he was 76, 51 years. Uh, he was he was big, kind of like bulky yeah. and dark skin. Um, he thinned and they called a him, bit when he got older. Yeah, they called him Blackie or Black Pete. And uh, then he thinned out a lot and lost a lot, a lot of his color. So he was pale, he was more pale. Um at the end, people on the street called him Petey Specs. I know I got a lot of people coming at me um, from his family. No one's ever called him that. And I'm like, hey, well, I'm not saying that, he, that in in his own family people call him that, but I've heard a lot of people on the street uh, refer to him as that. And uh, But back in the day, he was Blackie or Black Pete. Uh, did a couple years in the uh, late 2000s, early 2010s on a racketeering pinch. And has been, you know, free of any trouble with the law since then. That Jimmy was a kinda... big case that also had the boss, Jackie Jackaloni, was part of it. I believe he was it was a tossed or he was acquitted. I can't remember if you want. Yeah, to he got it. Like he got it know. acquitted. It was my first uh, De Detroit uh, mob trial. I, I covered the family secrets trial in Chicago and the Jackie Jackaloni Rico case in the same like six months as like a 29 year old. Um and yeah, Jackie beat the case. He was looking at a big sentence because it would have been his third federal conviction. Neil Fink did a brilliant job, his attorney. Um, shout out to Wade Fink, his son, who was a friend of the program. Uh, brilliant job of uh, dissecting, slicing and dicing star witnesses on the witness or on the on cross examination. Um, Jackie and Pete are known or have been known over the last 25 years or so to meet a couple times a week uh, at the stage deli in West Bloomfield. Um, for a long time, Alan Hilf would be at those meetings, the general, the Jewish mafia associate, Jackie's best friend, pseudo consigliere. Um, it was interesting that they would never talk business at the table because they knew that they could bug the table. They would just talk family, like, you know, how was the daughter's mm -hmm. swim meet? And then they'd go outside and take walk and, and do walk and, you know, walk and talks in the parking lot. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I, one thing that I'm really interested in as a researcher is kinship. And uh, usually my case studies I look at are, are the Sicilian mafia. But Detroit's one of the examples that Detroit is the most Sicilian type Borgata in the United States and that kinship is really important. Most of the guys here are related to each other. And you don't really see that as much in New York. You you see it a little bit in New York in terms of the Gambino 
in Zerillo, but but that's not the whole family. In Detroit, almost everybody is related to each other. And anyhow, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that that Pete Toko's father was also a Toko cousin of yeah. Jack Toko. Right. So his uh, Pete's uh, mom was a Toko, and she married a Toko right. that wasn't her Toko. It wasn't a bloodline from her Toko. Right. Like, you know, uh, for it's people that family. don't, yeah, you know, for people that aren't from Detroit, uh, most of the, or a big portion of the the Italians here uh, trace their lineage to Palermo, Terracini, and um, Toko's like, you know, having the name, you know, Smith or Harris or Williams. It's very... <laughs> yeah. That's um, a big. That's a big family. So there's like tw- there's probably like twenty Toko families in Detroit, and only one of those families is like the Toko family. But yeah, I think um, I think it's fascinating to break down the the kinship and. Um, so so was his father, um, was his father? Yeah. Uh, I don't. Want, I don't. I don't remember. I don't really want to like because I don't know enough about okay. his lineage so i don't want to get into the speculation game yeah no, no um, that's fine but what i do know um and this is playing off what you just said a big thing in detroit for the last 100 years has been keeping it in the family you know literally and figuratively a lot of intermarriage but also another hallmark has been you know cross pollination with other borgatas other crime families um, and I know that Pete Toko's father-in-law was from Chicago, or was, he actually died in the last couple of years, uh, that was named Sam Syracuse, um, who was a reputed Chicago mob associate. Um, and uh, so uh, PT's in-laws are all from the Chicago area. And if people don't know the history of the organization here, uh, the Zerillis and Tocos intermarried with the Profaci family many uh, years ago. That that's probably the most conspicuous example of yeah. intermarriage between Detroit and other big families. But then you also have the LA Mafia Don son. Oh yeah, Carl Licata marry into the Toco family. You had um, Joe uh, Barbera, oh, the junior, right. good one, the yeah, Mafia Prince of Northeast Pennsylvania. Um, successful Russell Buffalino marry into the uh, Detroit family and come over there. The the reputed, alleged, um, underboss of the Detroit family right now, uh, Anthony Lapiana comes from Chicago. And um, Barbera, that's his father was the was the guy who hosted <laughs> Apple hosted right. Apple Hatton. Right. So so this this is some some really colorful. Um, you know, uh, families from, from the history of this world. But what do you think? I mean, we're going to only, we're going to talk another couple minute or two, but what Jim, what do you think? Is this like the beginning of that? At the very least, I think it's the beginning of the end of this hundred year phase of the Detroit organized crime group. I don't think it's ever going to not be here or at least for the foreseeable future, but it's just, it's not going to be what it's been in this kind of mafia dynasty. I I, I agree. I mean the the heavyweights that have that same kind of stature that he that he had in the family. There aren't many of those guys left, and and I think there are some guys still around in their forties and fifties. I'm I'm not positive of their status, so I I don't want to like you know talk about those names. <laughs> so, um, but in terms of like the OGs in their seventies and eighties that have that kind of stature, I I don't I don't I'm not aware of anybody that can step in and replace these guys and stabilize the situation. So I, I would say this is, you know, the, the, the beginning of the end in terms of, um, you know, Detroit may eventually tradition in terms of traditional look like Kansas city or something like that, where there's like five or six guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, um, um, I, I, because I don't know who else is out there. Um, once, because if you look at the names you, we've mentioned, Jackie Giacalone, Tony LaPiana, um, these guys aren't getting any younger. And I, I'm, I'm not sure who's out there right now in their 40s and 50s who, you know, are, are, are going to step up. There's, you know, there's one uh, pair of brothers. I, I'm not going to mention their name. 
uh, that are in Metro Detroit, that there are, you know, rumors about them possibly being future leaders. Uh, they're in their 50s, maybe early 60s. Uh, but I will say that I think the Dana brothers, th these are people that have been in the news, been recognized as members of organized crime, both here in Michigan, as well as in, in Sicily. I sense that Joe Dana, who's not young either, but that he's probably the future in terms of what this is going to look like. And it's going to look, in my opinion, in 10 years from now, um, it's going to look more like a Sicilian. I don't want to impugn Mr. Deanna with things that he has not been uh, ever convicted of, uh, but it's just, it's just going to look different. It's not going to be your traditional mafia racketeering. There's going to be hints of that, but there's going to be more, I'd say, maybe trans-global, transnational activity. And more insular, more clannish, less American. Yeah, that, that that's, you know, something interesting to think about, um, you know, what the rank and file look like. Uh, in some ways, um, we, we wouldn't know. I mean, yeah. th this is a, a murky, shadowy world that we research. And as whether it's a reporter or a social scientist, it's very difficult to analyze this with any sense of precision, because even like a guy like Scott, who's who's tapped in and networked in and knows a lot of people, there's still things that he doesn't know that I don't know, because that's that's by design. <laughs> well, and I'll say <laughs> that here it's what's ironic kind of is that I can find out uh, intelligence in the Genovese or the Gambinos or the Bananos or in Philadelphia or in Boston Providence in some ways a, a lot easier than I can in my own backyard. Ironically. Ironically. Yeah. Um, yeah, people don't talk around here. And last thing I'll say, I don't want to give anyone the impression that uh, Joe D and his brother Mimo and those people that are loyal to him are in any ways um, – taken an adversarial or have taken an adversarial posture against any of the traditional uh, mafia aristocracy here, the Tocos, uh, uh, Jack, uh, Tocos, Jackalones, Corrados, et cetera. In fact, I know that they're all, everybody's copacetic. Joe D is somebody who, although he comes from Sicily and didn't move here full time until the late eighties, early nineties, he was somebody who was coming in here a lot as a teenager and he was getting FaceTime with like, Joe Zarelli, <laughs> um, uh, you know, godfathers as a, as a young man. Uh, and he's been really on, you know, great terms with both. He's been someone who's been able to navigate this very tenuous, rocky dynasty structure over the last 20 years, 25 years, when the Toko Zarelli's kind of split uh, and have, begin, have feuded. Uh, he's when I've been told has been able to kind of tow both sides of the line and is good with everybody. So it's not like he would take over the family in some, you know, hostile takeover. No, it seems new. like he, he, he's fully integrated and, yeah. and he has the pedigree too. I mean, right. as, I mean, even in he's, my book, I talk about that family that goes back to Detroit, you know, quite his uncle time. allegedly right now is the, one of the main godfathers in, in Sicily. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, uh, that's it for us. P. Toko died at 76. Um, he was, he was esteemed someone who could go anywhere in, in Michigan and outside of Michigan and, um, had a lot of juice in, in the circles that he ran in. So, uh, RIP to, to P. Toko, uh, OG pod, Scott Bernstein, Jimmy Bucciolato, we're out.